I do want to talk Knoxville because last year's race was chaotic. Do you think this year's race will be any different? It's going to be even worse by a long <laughs> We griped and complained about, oh, everything's aggressive last year, this, that, and other. It's getting worse and worse by the year. It's like all these drivers lose complete respect, and it's horrible, but I guess it is what it is. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Today, we have a very special guest. Chandler Smith is joining us, NASCAR Truck Series contender. I was looking at this, your second in points. You already got a win this year. So Chandler, first off, thanks for being on the show. And second, how would you grade your second full-time season in truck so far? Uh, definitely a lot better than last year, to say the least. Last year at this time, we were struggling. Um, it's funny, me and my wife were just talking, just got through taking a trip last year. Uh, before we took our little mini vacation that we took, it was like everything was going wrong that could possibly go wrong about every single race. It was either we had a really good truck and we got caught up in somebody's mess or we had a horrible truck and I just we were just horrible. There ain't nothing around it. So um, we took a trip out west and kind of had a little mental reset and came back and we were extremely strong and had that really strong last half of the season. So uh, we just got through doing that now. Uh, the playoffs are among us. We're about to get started there. We only have a few races left. For myself and my team, we're focused in on getting that regular season championship. So that's what um, we're all focused on right now. Absolutely. Within striking distance, for sure. I will ask you more about the truck series in a moment. But uh, the first time I ever heard about you, you were racing super late models. That's the first time I ever saw you race in person. Uh, and I know you still compete in super late models. So I want to ask, what is it you love about short track racing and specifically super late models? And how has that helped prepare you for the top levels of NASCAR? Yeah, it just honestly, the competition's really, really strong in super late model racing. I think that gets overlooked a lot by many is super late model racing. The competition's probably a lot stronger than some of the series in NASCAR, to be completely honest with you. And um, they're race cars. They got, they're pretty light. They have a lot of horsepower. They have a lot of fall off as far as tire wear and stuff. And um, all that stuff as a driver, mastering that and winning races and learning how to be fast and working with all of that and figuring out what you need under the hood and setup wise to be good every single weekend, everywhere you go, it just masters your craft. So that's what I do it for one. I do it for fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. I love going back short track racing back to my roots. It's family oriented and it's a lot of fun, stress-free environment. Second reason is it helps my craft. And the last thing is it, it, it honestly is just the, the, all the things that I've learned in the past three years of racing supers, just kind of here and there, um, and kind of doing my own deal a little bit has helped me so much coming back over to the trucks and being able to tell Danny, my crew chief, like, Hey, this is what we need. This is the direction we need to go. And, um, that's always, that's a really big help when a driver can recognize what they need. Yeah, communication is key. And a, a race car driver always has great supporters as well. And so I do want to bring in Bill Maher here from Charge Me. You both have something pretty exciting to announce, if I'm not mistaken. Bill, take it away, putting you on the spot. What's up, Eric? How you doing? Thanks a lot for having us. And, and it's good to see Chandler uh, outside of hits fell in the rubber every, every time that we're in the pit together. But yeah, we're pretty excited. Uh, we're using a, a company called Prolific Studios uh, that has developed a nft for the first professional driver that will be out to the marketplace it'll be a collectible obviously it'll be an asset it grows in value and it's also going to help a great cause which is uh friends of our uh, friends of the program chandler and i which is mvp merging vets and players that's randy couture dana white and uh, uh nate boyer and they started an amazing uh program for veterans please look it up everybody and proceeds of the nft is going to go uh to to them as well as uh you know continuing to racing for chandler as we're we're, we're heading to some really high high areas in the next couple of years and we're pretty excited about it yeah and we've seen you on chandler's truck we've also seen him on uh, a couple of xfinity starts you've made this year chandler so uh bill why chandler smith first and foremost yeah yeah it's funny so a little story you know um and we'll make it kind of quick, but uh, I'm sitting on LinkedIn one day and this, this this race car driver looks up and says, hey, I think that thing you're doing with Fuel Me, which is our other company for Super Late Model, we're a sponsor, um, uh, is cool for my dad's construction company. And and I said, who's this guy, you know? And so I, I, I reached out to him and we started talking. 
And I made the ultimate mistake. I said, Chandler, you ever need a sponsor? And he just goes, oh boy, <laughs> you did it now. <laughs> a, and I never had a more respectful, amazing person in my life that I talked to and in such a young age at that time, mature. And I said, I told my partners and our board, I said, I'd like to get involved uh, with Chandler Smith as, as a driver. Where he goes, we go. Be, be, whatever OEM, whatever race team, you know, we're, we're very blessed to have obviously KBM, uh, TRD, uh, working with Sam Hunt Racing and, and Xfinity Series, which is uh, amazing. Donnie Wilson, as well as Anthony Campy and Super Late Model. Um, new, to the, new to the industry, and I couldn't be more prouder to be involved, especially with a guy and a family like Chandler, their family now. So his wife, baby coming, mom and dad, everybody, we're, we're all in. So thank you. How great is it to have uh, this kind of commitment? Like, I feel like every driver, they want those personal connections to sponsors. Like, how important is that to your to furthering your career? You have no earthly clue. And honestly, Bill still has no earthly clue how impactful this relationship has been for myself personally and my family, first and foremost. Like he said, we're family. I'm, I talk to this knucklehead every single day. He's like, He's like another dad to me. I love him to death. I love all of his kids. I like I being an older brother. You don't have to go dad, but okay. <laughs> older, older brother, whatever, whatever you want to name it, whatever you want to name it. <laughs> we're all family at the end of the day. We talk every single day. Uh, me and the wife just were up there not too long ago just hanging out. And the stuff that me and him do, and like you're talking about, the personal relationship. And I stress this to him all the time just because, like, I'm super, super grateful for him. And – um I tell them all the time, like, man, there's nobody, there's no sponsor, there's nobody that does this. We're the only ones. You're the only one. And I just want, I want you to know how grateful I am for that and how blessed I am for that. And I it, appreciate it, Taylor. But as you know, that, you know, we're at top budget right now. So all this smooth talking you're doing with me, I can't write another check. So we're done. But I love it. <laughs> I love this. But no, we're all in, Eric. I mean, you know, we're, I've been at 12 out of 14 races with Chandler personally. My family, my wife, I mean, we weren't in NASCAR before. We weren't in racing before. And, um, you know, meeting the people that's in the sport in general, the brotherhood and all that is, I, I really hope a lot more people learn about this sport because it is more strategic and exciting than I've ever dreamed. And it's great. And with Prolific Studios coming in now doing ENFT, we're going to bring some environmental ideas to the, the racing team. And Jared Washington, which is the CEO of Prolific, um, ex-NFL player from the Patriots and Eagles, um, you know, and as well as my son is the developer of the NFT, Christopher Marr. Um, so, you know, we're bringing a little bit of all the professional sports and regular, you know, uh, fans to this thing. And it's an exciting part to own a piece of that history. Love that. No, that's really exciting what you guys are doing. It's a good cause as well. It's a good paint scheme. I know uh, Chandler had a great run at Kansas in the Charge Me colors recently. Oh, wait till uh, you see this one in Iowa. Oh, oh, I'm excited. Oh, boy. This one's looking good. It's ooh. white. So we're doing a white out this week. I love it. I love it. It's going to get dirty, I'm afraid to tell you. But... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it looks good when we're on the podium. That. Good point. Battle scars. Uh, I do want to ask a few more truck series questions while I have you, Chandler. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't want to bring the, the tone down too much here, but I remember after Atlanta, um, you said afterwards that KBM needed to have some sort of team meeting. And I know you you, you had took issue with uh, your teammate Corey Heim at Gateway. And so I do want to ask, where do things stand over at KBM? Have you had those meetings? Do you feel like you're on the same page with everyone? Um, to be completely honest, I don't I think everybody knows where I stand and there's not much more to say there. I think everybody knows where I stand. Um, the incident at gateway was, is what it is. If I was to stay in it, we would have both wrecked and a KBM truck wouldn't have won at the end of the day. Everybody knew that we were the best truck by far. Um, so there's no question about it there. It just wasn't our day. God, it wasn't, it wasn't in God's will for us to win that day. Simple as that, but, uh, it's definitely frustrating to say the least, but at the end of the day, um, I think everybody kind of knows where I stand, though. Let's talk lastly about Knoxville, because I do want to, we would talk about the paint scheme, but I do want to talk Knoxville because last year's race was chaotic. I, I, th I think that you gets <laughs> over, that word gets overused, but I think it's the best way to potentially describe this event. So do it you was think... horrible. <laughs> okay, okay, horrible. Stronger words. Well, I want to ask you that. Do you think this year's race will be any different? It's going to be even worse by a long <laughs> You remember how many trucks got piled up getting into turn one at the very end of the race? I lost count, yeah. Yeah, it's probably going to be worse than that. I, With how the racing's been this year and everything, it's been – we we griped and complained about, oh, everything's aggressive last year, this, that, and other. It's getting worse. 
and worse by the year. It's like all these drivers lose complete respect, and it, it's horrible, but I guess it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun to watch to an extent, but I know on my show, I, I talk about, you know, man, goodness, it just it becomes just a slugfest. It's just who can get the last shot in. So uh, on that note, do you feel like, you know, anything can change? Like, how do you think things change in trucks? And how does racing in the truck series compare? I mean, you kind of just said it, but compare to what you do in super late models. Oh, it doesn't compare. There's so much more respect in super late model racing because most of the drivers are working on their stuff and probably 98% of the garage and the trucks hasn't even touched a wrench in their life more than likely. I'm just being honest. So with that being said, I don't think it's probably going to change unless you got drivers like my first, no, my second year at KBM when I did the 10 races or whatever after uh, COVID hit. We tore up a lot of stuff when I came back. I was go- I was getting thrown to the wolves, going a mile and a half, these big tracks, and we wrecked a lot of stuff. And I was coming into the shop and fixing it. And that fixing trucks every single weekend, it'll definitely change your mindset of what situations you put yourself in for sure. So I also grew up doing my own deal on Super Late Model. We had our own team and all. And I know what, how much money and how much time goes into this for everybody that works at any of these race shops, how much time they're away from their families. And you just got to have some respect for that. You can't just go out there and just completely wreck guys. It's it's not only you you're thinking about it. You're thinking about, you're thinking about 50 people back in the shop. You know what I mean? So I would love for it to change. Cup guys, the old veterans and cup guys, they talk about how even the next gen cup air guys that are coming in now don't have any respect neither. So, I mean, is it ever going to go away now? Is it this, is it just the next generation of drivers that's coming through? That's going to be like this because I mean, look at it, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, all those guys, they worked on their own stuff growing up. I don't know many new cup drivers that came that same path now. So I don't know, but Hopefully it does for the sport because it's really sad, kind of like what you said, truck series. It turns into a slugfest, and it's whoever gets the last shot. Nobody wants to see that. People want to see pure, talented race car drivers and see who has the best truck and who doesn't have the best truck and what their talent can do to kind of make up for that truck, right? Not, let's just go send it in here and completely dump a guy and, oh, now I won the race or whatever the case may be. Yeah. That's not. Yeah. No, well, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, we'll end this on a positive note. You did lead the most laps last year at Knoxville. Uh, had a good run going. So yeah. w- what will it take for you to win this race, stay up front, avoid the pileup? Like, what's it going to take? Oh, man, a lot of things to go right. Honestly, just staying out of all the trouble. I mean, I already know what we're bringing. We're bringing exactly what we had last year. We were really good last year. It was just a matter of staying out of trouble. And I'll be honest, I don't know what more the track could have done to do a better job than what they did last year. And I don't mean this in any bad way at all, but after probably 50 to 80 laps into that race, it turned into kind of like a bad race because it got super dry slick off of the bottom. So, and it rubbered up on the bottom all the way around. If you barely, like I'm talking that much, got out of the rubber, you were basically either spinning out or there was a freight train of trucks that just filled the hole or punched, punched their way straight through you. And you just lost 10 spots right there. And it's like, what are you supposed to do on that? Like, so I don't know. Um, track position was big last year. If, if you went back and watched the race here recently, you'll see that how I actually obtained the lead was we stayed out when a bunch of people pitted and I think I restarted second or something. And that's how I got the lead. And, um, we checked out from there and actually our tires turned into slick tires at the very end of the race. So, um, I had no, I had no traction whatsoever on restarts. I was getting absolutely murdered on restarts, but track position is key to these attrition races that goes for road courses too mm-hmm. well you've got the weekend all to yourself truck series the only nascar series racing this weekend so for better or worse everyone's <laughs> going to be watching <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for your time channel always appreciate your uh, your brutal honesty we need more of that in the sport and bill thanks again for jumping in as well great to see new sponsors come in supporting young up-and-coming drivers i appreciate both of your time i'm happy, happy to do it and if anybody's interested in the enfts they have a piece of that history they can look at www.prolificnfts.com or go to Chandler's website, which is chandlersmithracing.com and uh, have a piece of history. We'll link both those down in the description. Easy for everyone to find. Thanks again, Chandler, for being on. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, I appreciate you guys.